Hello, I'm Tim Bannister, and this session is Introduction to Kubernetes Docs. I'm joined by Celeste Horgan, Evi Aini, and Brad Topol. So in this session, we're going to talk about the Kubernetes website, uh, the group that maintains it, how to add or update documentation for Kubernetes features, a little bit about how docs happen in the re release cycle, how to localize your content, and where to get help when you need it. At the end, we're going to be around and we're going to try and spend plenty of time answering any questions that you have. So as I mentioned, this is the Kubernetes Documentation Special Interest Group. We maintain the Kubernetes website at kas.io. Now, the main thing that that documentation provides is, that website provides is documentation. And the documentation is uh, categorized into several uh, broad areas. First one I want to talk about is concepts high-level overviews of topics. There's also tasks and tutorials. So these provide detailed step-by-step -step instructions explaining how to accomplish a specific outcome. There's a reference section. Along with a glossary of terms used in Kubernetes, uh, you'll also find details about the Kubernetes API and the binaries that make up Kubernetes, you know, how they work, their overall purpose, their command line options, and that kind of detail. I also want to mention that this website is localized into already 13 different languages. English is the upstream localization, but there are 12 others. Evie is going to talk about that more later. And localizing content is just one way of contributing. I want to mention why the documentation for Kubernetes is a really important way, I think, of contributing to Kubernetes. Because documentation is you know, as much as code delivers features, documentation drives adoption of those features by making them accessible to people who are not already involved. And so if you're interested in contributing to the documentation, your work there helps make Kubernetes accessible to a wider audience and indeed might help bring on more contributors in the future. In terms of the technology, uh, the Kubernetes website is a static site generated using Markdown uh, from code that's on GitHub, uh, like a lot of Kubernetes projects. Um, it's on GitHub in the Kubernetes organization. The repository is called Website. Markdown is um, similar to plain text, but you add extra highlighting, for example, with these asterisks or underscores. Basic Markdown also offers lists, hyperlinks, uh, code snippets, um, and a few other things. I'll talk more about how we extend plain markdown to add additional features in a bit. Before then, I want to talk about some different ways to contribute. Uh, Celeste's going to talk about that in detail. If you're wondering where to start, SigDocs curates a list of good first issues. We've identified these as a good choice for making your first contribution. Now, when I say first contribution, that could be that you're new to Kubernetes at all, you've not contributed anything, but it could also mean that you're actually someone who's contributed to code already or another part of the, the organization. You've not contributed to the documentation website. So in either of those cases, these good first issues are for you. We've, uh, we've got this list and if you wanna get started, you're very welcome to pick up one of these labeled issues, look for the good first issue label, find that and make that your first contribution so that we're trying to give you uh, an easy as route as possible to getting started. Now, if this is your very first contribution to Kubernetes, there is some uh, sort of paperwork, it's online, but paperwork to get through before we can review your PR and uh, move it forward to getting merged. We need you to sign a contributor license agreement. There's two ways to uh, get this signed, depending on whether you're signing as an individual or whether that actually you're associated with an organization that has signed uh, as a corporation. In either case, uh, you can open a pull request, but then what you'll find is that some automation checks whether you have signed the CLA. Now that check is by your email address. So it's important to make sure that the email address that you're using in your Git commits matches up with the one that's used to check your CLA status. Now you see that uh, details uh, link that you can click on the right highlighted there. That takes you to the page on the Linux Foundation website that you can use to sign in 
check your CLA status and also to sign up. I'm going to talk more now about uh, Markdown and some of the technologies we use to get the website built. So on top of Markdown, we use Go templates and the particular format of Go templates we use is uh, Hugo templating. Hugo is uh, an extension of Golang's built-in templating that renders static sites for you. So the Hugo tool takes the whole set of Markdown source code, adds a set of rules and works out how to build the pages. The theme that we use for that is called Doxy, uh, which we've customized uh, moderately heavily to look like the, the Kubernetes website that you see today. And to make all of that work, we've got some automation around pull requests on GitHub. I'll talk about that. We've got a tool called Prowl, which is used not just in the website repo, but across Kubernetes. Some of you will be really used to it. For others, this might be your first encounter with this, this robot. Prowl merges PRs when they're marked as looks good to me. I'll talk more about what that means later. They're approved and they're not held for um, you know, some action to happen. But actually, after you submit a PR, the Netlify tool, which hosts the website, does a complete build of the whole site based on your changes. If you've got a PR, you'll see that a comment turns up on that PR. Uh, see the arrow? Uh, linking to a preview. You can click on that link and what you'll see is basically, it looks like the same website. The URL is a bit different. And so this is a version of the website that you can cl click on to check if your code is okay. And it's also what reviewers will look at if they wanna make sure that your changes are valid. Now, if you wanna get some extra credit, uh, what you can do is you can go and find the page that you changed in your PR. Now, Netlify doesn't do this for you. So it's, it's nice if people do this. Find that particular page, dig out the link and add a comment to your pull request uh, saying this is the exact page I changed and maybe like this is the original page. And if you do that, you're making life easy for reviewers and approvers by letting people directly compare your changes. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about the, uh, the process of getting the, the website built. As I say, it uses Netlify. So starting from the point when you've actually proposed a change, uh, maybe you're going to fix uh, a spelling mistake on the website. And unlike um, some other code changes, like a, a one word fix can be a valid contribution. You've opened a pull request. So GitHub tells Netlify that you've done that. Netlify builds and publish that preview version I mentioned. At the same time, the Prowl tool makes sure that you've signed that contributor license agreement and starts tracking review and approval status. Prowl does a few other things. For example, it'll work out what languages you're contributing to and add a suitable label. So a reviewer will have a look at your PR. If it's technically sound, in other words, you've, you've put in some changes, they make sense, the markdown is valid markdown. Um, there's no egregious violations of the style guide, more on that in a bit, and it matches the PR description, then the reviewer adds an LGTM label. The approver has a different job. The approver's job is not to, to verify your changes technically, is to look at that PR description and just agree that that change is an appropriate one to make for the website. But once both of those things has happened, uh, the PR is ready to go forward. If it's a small change, like fixing one spelling mistake, often one person can do both of those roles. Now at this point, Prow will see that the PR is LGTM and approved and tell GitHub to merge it. GitHub merges your pull request, and Netlify sees that the master branch is updated, builds and deploys the website. This is a continuous deployment process. So once that main branch is updated, your change is alive. So to be clear, this isn't uh, anything that has to wait for the next Kubernetes release. Um, your change is alive as soon as they're merged. There is a separate branch process. It's relevant if you are contributing features that um, don't need documenta documenting it quite yet. If you're making changes for a future Kubernetes release, find the development branch instead and put your changes on that branch or propose a merge into that branch using a PR. Don't worry if you're not sure, reviewers will help you find the right target branch and, and sort that out. Okay, I'm gonna hand over to Celeste now 
who's going to talk about how to get started and about writing good documentation. Thanks, Tim. So, um, as Tim mentioned, the high-level overview is that you create a fork, you make some changes, and then you open a pull request. Um, we're going to back up a little bit and talk about how to make the changes that make it into that pull request. So, typically, um, as Tim mentioned, we work on local forks of the documentation repo. Um, nobody can create branches directly against main unless it's for a release or a translation. Um, so you're going to pull down your local fork onto your computer and then you're going to run two commands, make container-image and make container-serve. So um, we deploy Hugo locally into a container because here in Kubernetes land we love containers, um, but it also gives us a consistent environment to build against, which means that what you see locally is going to reflect what's going to build in that automatic preview that um, Tim mentioned earlier. Um, so once that builds, you can access the website on your computer at localhost 1313. Next slide, please. Um, one thing you keep in mind is if this is your first contribution, uh, we do load in the doxy theme as a sub-module. Um, so you will need to pull in uh, the doxy theme and its dependencies using the git sub-module update command the very first time you run it. Uh, you'll run into errors otherwise, so this is really important. Uh, next step. Um, so when it comes to like doing a contribution as a whole, um, we think that everybody is welcome to contribute to documentation. Um, there isn't a baseline level of technical skill needed other than being able to wrangle uh, Hugo and Git. Um, and contributions from all different levels of technical skill are super, super welcome, as well as contributions from people speaking other languages. So um, the majority of our contributions happen in English, but uh, as we're going to talk about later, there's about 13 different localizations of the Kubernetes docs, and they all need contributions as well that are equally valuable. Um, there's really detailed documentation on how to contribute to documentation on the website, so check out the section titled Contribute on your spare time. Next slide, please. Um, so as Tim mentioned, uh, we do have a documentation style guide and what the style guide lines out is things like capitalization rules and grammar rules and words that we try to avoid and words that we try to use instead. Um, and in general, we, we do a check for any egregious errors um, against the style guide. Uh, so take a look when you have a chance. Uh, the other thing that the style guide is great for, next slide, um, is uh, word things like um, Hugo shortcodes that we use across the site to do special things like note and warning blocks and other things to enrich the documentation experience. Um, we welcome contributions to our style guide as well. So if you think that there is a rule that our documentation should be following in terms of language and grammar, please feel free to open up an issue in regards to that so that we can start the discussion. Um, next slide, please. So, in terms of getting going with your first contribution, the first thing to keep in mind is that we are here to help. Um, and the best thing that you possibly can do is to ask for help. Um, for the most part, we're very available via Slack and SIG docs and SIG docs localization. Um, we also have a mailing list, Kubernetes SIG docs. And if you join that, you get an automatic invitation to the weekly SIG meetings on Zoom. Um, they occur I live in Vancouver, so in my time zone, they occur in at 10.30 on Tuesdays most weeks, um, and I believe it's about 5 or 6 UTC. Uh, another great way to get started, if you can't make it to, um, to the SIG meetings and Zoom and uh, Slack isn't going to work out for you, um, take a look for good first issues in GitHub. We are generally very good about tagging those. Next slide, please. Um, most contributors to the Kubernetes project are not technical writers by trade. However, I am, and as are a few other people on SIG docs. And so I wanted to take a moment to talk about um, just how to write good documentation for people who aren't writers by trade. Um, the first thing to keep in mind is that all writing contributions are valuable to SIG docs. Um, you'll see below an example of a one word change to documentation. Um, in other SIGs, that might be viewed as a bit of a spammy change, but for us, that's super valid because that actually corrects the grammar of that sentence and makes the documentation easy to understand by letting the language get out of the way. So edits and typo corrections are incredibly welcome. As a rule, we kind of like it if you're going to submit an edit, maybe edit the whole page and not just one area. 
Um, new content is super, super welcome. And we feel that developers are the people to write that content by and large. Um, but also, if you are a writer by trade or just very comfortable with the English language, we really, really welcome um, editing and reviewing PRs because a lot of the contributions we get from developers are not by people who have English as a first language. And they do actually need that help with grammar to bring up the quality of the documentation. Next slide, please. Um, if you're taking on a big new documentation task, uh, just some general tips for writing well. First off, break down what you're writing into the smallest sections possible. Um, it's really, really hard to say, I'm going to document staple sets. That's a really, really big thing to talk about. But it's easier to think of it in terms of, I need to introduce staple sets as a concept or something that's explained at a high level. Then I need to explain to people what tasks they can do with staple sets, um, like adding or removing them. Um, and those are step-by-step -step instructions or tasks. Um, and then I'm going to provide a table of reference of any flags or options that you can set on stateful sets that are useful to, to know as a piece of reference for people who are working with them actively. Um, and those are called reference tasks. So I think breaking it down and then understanding the different categories of writing is a really good strategy. Um, I personally find writing in bullet points first and then translating those into full sentences very helpful. Um, and as the lead tech writer uh, at the CNCF, Zach Carlison often says, always be deleting. Uh, try to be as brief as possible and to write and then delete a whole bunch down. Next slide, please. Um, a few last tips. Write in the present tense. So I am or the stateful set does rather than I will do or the stateful set will do um, or in the past tense. I won't or I was doing the stateful set was. Um, in general, keep sentences short. Um, use plain language when possible. Avoid complicated words. Um, there's a great app called Hemingway app. It's free, it's online, and it automatically scans anything that you put into it for complicated words and sentences that are too long, and I highly recommend using it. Um, and finally, ask for help in SIG Docs because there are technical writers hanging out in there. Um, next slide, please. So once you've made your wonderful, well-written first uh, request, what you're going to do is you're going to commit it and then open a pull request as Tim stated against um, Kubernetes website. And this is where the PR Wrangler comes in. So the PR Wrangler is a um, approver in SIG Docs, so somebody who's fairly high up the contribution ladder. Um, and on a weekly rotation, one person in that list is assigned to look at the PRs that week and approve them for content. Um, so these are people who are going to provide you detailed feedback and suggestions. Um, they're going to put that approve label on your PR so that it can get merged. And um, if you're writing something fairly technical, these are the people who will flag down the appropriate SIG to make sure that the information is technically accurate. Um, so the rotation for that is on the wiki. And uh, now I'm going to hand this over to Irvi, who's going to talk about localization, uh, the blog, and next steps for contributing. Thank you, Celeste. So here uh, in Stick Talks, we have different kind of subgroups, and one of them is localizations. So What's the difference between translation and localizations? While in translation, we translate the whole page from one language to the others. In localizations, we try to make sure that the content of this page is appropriate uh, when we translate it into the other language. So it's more like adapts the message into the local audience of the language that we will translate it into. And in these subgroups, we try to tackle some kind of common problems for each of the localizations team. For example, if let's say one localization have team have a problems with how to sync the diff branch between the master upstreams and their own branch, and uh, the other team is having the same problems, we will try to kind of um, discuss whether we have kind of solutions for this kind of problems or other teams have um, already already have the solution for these problems. Next, please. 
And here we have 12 localization teams as of today. And more teams are, of course, welcome. Next, please. And there is a common procedures on how if you are want to add a new localizations. So the first important thing is make sure of the code of your ISO language. And then you can take a look into this DR here. Uh, there is an example of how France um, add their localizations. And then there is also a content on how you can localize your content from the upstream, of course, English. And then you can uh, try to uh, localize it into your, your own language. Um, next, please. And there is a golden rules on how you can submit your PR for localizations. It is make sure that when you submit your PR, it is for one language. And of course, there is exceptions for this kind of PR. Um, for example, when um, we create a release branch, that branch for a specific release, and we try to sync with the master branch there is um, changes from different localizations included in that PR. And, but but it's, it's also applicable because um, that's the process that we have on when we are trying to create a real branch. The other example is when we switch the whole site into Doxy. And another example here is the security notice for uh, certain features. Next slide, please. And there's also another sub project here, which is blogs. So there is several guidelines for this uh, sub projects when you are trying to submit your uh, blog post. The first one is the article should be applicable for all users. So it shouldn't be a specific on vendor. However, if you are not sure because there is a delicate balance, you can try to reach out the blog team to check whether your article is still appropriate for blog posts or not. And the article are not published on a specific dates since it will be reviewed by a volunteer and it might take time to review the content. And if it's more like um, strict in the terms of the schedules, you might consider talking to the CNCF marketing. And it should be an original post and aim to be future proof since the Kubernetes has a high velocity development and try to plan to cover long-term technical content. You can check the blog on the link that provided here. And of course, anyone can write the blog post and submit it for a review. Next, please. So here you can try to contribute by filling on issues like suggesting of features or reporting bugs. You can, of course, add, um, log error whenever you submit a bug report. You can also help with web designs, reviewing pull requests, localizing existing pages, writing new contents. And of course, you can also help by improving existing contents, adding text or diagrams. SIGDOCS in general uses Kit and GitHub, Hugo and Netlify to make it all work. You can edit pages and open pull requests directly within GitHub website. And if you are suggesting changes, you can preview them locally first. Next, please. So you can look in around if you like. It's OK to feel overwhelmed at first. And you can try to ask some help. You can try by starting smalls to help you get an idea of who is working on what, what tasks are underway, and what's on the roadmap. Next, please. So how can we get in touch? You can try to sign up for Slack in the slack.kiteace.io and drop by in our channel in SIG Talks. And there's also different kind of channels for our subgroups, which is the SIG-Docs-Localizations and SIG-Docs-Log. Come and say hello. Feel free to ask questions. Next, please. You can try to take a look into our GitHub and see good first issues here. 
try to join our Google groups, the Kubernetes Seek Talks. And by joining that, you can get invitation to our weekly meeting. You can drop pay and uh, say hello here. See Slack for details. Uh, now I, I will hand it this over to Celeste. Yeah, so we wanted just to thank everybody who attended this talk uh, and we hope you learned a lot about documentation. Uh, believe it or not, this is a very high level overview of what the SIG does and there's a lot more that we could go into. So all of us will be available after the session for a Q&A and we hope you'll join us there. We also hope to see you uh, at our weekly meetings and in the SIG Docs channel on Kubernetes Slack. Uh, so thank you very much and have a great day, everybody.